Okay, in the next few videos, we're going to be looking at the graphs of sine, cos, and tan. And at the moment, we're just going to focus on the graph of sine. So let's have a look at that. Here's the graph of sine. There are a couple of things that I want you to notice about this. First of all, one complete wave takes 360 degrees. So notice that there, that's 360 degrees. So one wave starts here at zero, goes up, comes down, and there we go, completes one wave in 360. The next wave would also take 360, and the wave after that too. Okay, the sine wave also has a maximum y value of one, and a minimum y value of negative one. So in other words, the sine graph goes between plus and minus one on the y-axis. Lastly, last thing I want you to notice, is that the central line for the sine graph is here. This is like the x-axis, so it's exactly halfway between one and negative one. That is the central line. Now there are gonna be a couple other things that we want to notice about the sine graph as we carry on, uh, but these are the, the most important observations at the start. Okay, what are we gonna to have to do? What kind of questions? We will have to not just sketch sine x, but the graph of a sine bx plus c, all right? We need to sketch a sine bx plus c, which means we've got to understand what the values of a, b, and c are going to do. And the way I'm gonna illustrate that for you now is we're gonna look at Desmos and see how all of this works. So I'm gonna shift over to Desmos. Okay, so here we are on Desmos. You can see uh, the, the graph. Again, it starts at zero, goes to 360 as one complete wave. As I said before, this wave repeats every 360 degrees, right? So the same wave carries on and on and on forever and ever. And also notice again, that the wave goes up to positive one as a maximum value and down to negative one as a minimum value. Okay, well, let's ask the question, what do those values A, B, and C do? So let's start with A, okay? So let's say instead of having the graph Y equals sine X, let's ask what would happen if we had two sine X. Well, hopefully what you can see is that uh, the graph is kind of stretched in the Y direction. So the maximum value now, instead of being one is two, and the minimum value, instead of being negative one, is negative two, right? It's been, it's been doubled. And uh, if we were to do the same thing with three sine X, you can see it's been stretched even further. So that the maximum point is three and the minimum is negative three. Now this thing is what we call the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the center line, right, from the x-axis, all the way up to a peak or to a trough, okay? So the distance from the center line all the way up to the peak is three. Try another one, let's say we had y equals five sine x, that means that the amplitude there is five, okay? All right, that should be fairly straightforward. Let's go back to the graph of sine x, let's zoom in again. And we're going to ask the question, what happens if I change it? So we've got sine 2x or 3x or 4x. Well, let's have a look. I'm going to copy paste this, I think, so we can really compare. Let's find the graph y equals sine 2x. So that's in the purple. Now, what does that look like? Well, the graph has been squashed in the x direction. Okay, so it's like we've taken the red graph and we've squashed it a little bit. Now, the key thing to notice is how many waves there are in 360 degrees. So, if you were to follow, we've got one wave going up to 180, and then we've got a second wave going to 360. So, in other words, we've got two waves in 360 degrees. Two waves in 360 degrees. Well, let's change it now so that we've got sine 3x. Okay, again, we've squashed it, but we've squashed it a bit more. I'm going to ask the same question. How many waves have we got in 360 degrees? Well, we've got one wave that goes up to 120, and then we've got another wave that goes up to 240. Then we've got another wave that goes up to 360. So we have got three full waves in 360 degrees. And we can do the same thing with sine 4x and 5x and 6x. In other words, the number that goes here, what we call b, simply tells us how many waves fit inside 
360 degrees. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five waves in 360 degrees. Okay, now that, that's A and B, what about C? So here we've got the graph of sine x. What would happen if we did sine x plus one? Okay, now hopefully what you can see is that the graph has shifted up by one. Okay, it's moved up in the, in the y direction. If we did sine x plus two, it moves up by two. And sine x plus three, it's the same thing. Or we could do with negative numbers, so sine x minus one goes down by, by one. What I want you to see here actually is that the value C really tells us where the center line moves to. So let's say I was to say we're doing sine x plus C, I add a slider, and I'll spot the line y equals C there to be our center line. So as I shift my value of C, oh, that's gone a bit crazy. Okay, as I change my value of C there, so C in this case is negative 1.4, then the whole graph has shifted down by negative 1.4, but that means that the central line, that little red line there, is the line y equals negative 1.4. Okay, all right, so just to recap, let's get rid of all these. We're asked to find y equals a sine bx plus c. What does a do? So let's try two there. It increases the amplitude, right? So it scales it in the y direction. What does B do? It squashes it in the x direction, or in other words, it tells us how many waves there are in 360 degrees. So in this case, two waves in 360 degrees. What does C do? If I add two, it shifts the graph in the y direction by, uh, in this case, by two, okay? So let's try to synthesize those results. Okay, so what does A, B, and C mean if we're plotting Y equals A sine BX plus C? Well, A tells us the amplitude of the wave, right? How much it's stretched in the Y direction. B tells us the number of waves in 360 degrees. In other words, the squash in the X direction. And C tells us the shift up or down, the shift in the y direction, or another way of thinking of that, it tells us the central line. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to use that information to see if we can sketch this particular graph here, y equals two sine three x plus one, right? So we're gonna see if we can interpret that. We just gotta ask ourselves the question, what do each of these values here mean? So what does that two mean? Well, if A is equal to 2, that means that the amplitude, amplitude is 2, okay? What about this one here? What about the 3? Well, in this case, it means that B is equal to 3, and so that means that there are 3 waves in 360 degrees. Well, if that's the case, if there are three waves in 360 degrees, then that means, therefore, that one wave is going to be 120 degrees, right? Because it's 360 divided by three. And lastly, C, uh, in this case, C is one, right? So we just highlight that there. This is our C. If C is one, that means that the shift in the Y direction is one. So if I was to sketch this, I was to do a really, really rough sketch, so I'll do it over here, okay? I'm gonna work backwards. So instead of doing A, B, C, I'm gonna do C, B, A. So I know that my graph has been shifted up by one. So there you go, that's my value there, one. So that's gonna be like my center line, okay? All right, next, I know that I've got one wave in 120 degrees, so I'm gonna label this here as 120, that's gonna be one wave, and so half a wave will be 60 degrees, okay? And lastly, my amplitude is two, well that means that from the center line, I've got to go up by two, there to three, 
and down by two to negative ones, right? So I know that the maximum value I can be will be positive three, and the minimum value I can be is negative one. So what is one wave going to look like? Well, one wave is going to look something like this. It's going to start here. It's going to go up. We have half a wave there. Sorry that my pen's not very smooth. And it's going to go down and finish like that. Okay, I'm going to try that one more time because that's not super clear. Okay, so first half of the wave kind of does that. And then the second half of the wave goes down to the minimum and back up to here. Okay, now it really should be, should be touching here at three and, and negative one, but never mind. That's basically how you draw the graph. Okay, all right. I think it may be helpful just to do one further example, just to make sure that we're really clear. Okay, last example. Here we're going to try to sketch the graph y equals three sine x upon two minus one. Okay, so we're going to try to interpret each of these things again. So here that tells me that my amplitude is equal to three because that's my a value. This thing here, okay, this is my b. Now that looks a little bit more tricky than last time, okay, but instead of thinking this is x upon two, we could think of it as a half x, okay? So in other words, my b value is equal to a half, okay? If my b value is equal to half, it means that there is half a wave in 360 degrees, right? Because remember, the B tells you how many waves there are in 360. So in this case, we've got half a wave in 360, and therefore that means that one wave is 720 degrees, right? If half a wave is in 360, a full wave is in 720, okay? So that's that. And lastly, what's this thing here? Well, our C value is therefore equal to negative one. And if our C value is negative one, that means that we've been shifted down by one. So I'm going to sketch this again. So again, really rough sketch because it doesn't have to be super neat. How am I going to sketch this? Well, once more, I'm going to start with C and then B and then A. Okay, so C, I know that my center line has been shifted down to negative one. So I'm going to draw it like that, right? So there you go. That's my center line, negative one. Okay, second, B. I know from my B value that one wave takes 720 degrees. So I'm going to label that there as 720. So that means that half a wave is going to be 360. In other words, I'll be crossing my center line here and here. Okay. Third, my amplitude is 3. So from negative 1, I go up by 3 to positive 2. Okay. And down by 3 to negative 4. Okay, so that is going to be my top value there, my maximum values, and down here this will be my minimum values. And once again, I'm going to try to draw a sine wave as smoothly as I can. So it's going to start there, going to go up, going to come back down. So that's half a wave, and then go down, come back up, and that's a full wave. Okay, so uh, that's two examples of sketching sine graphs. I hope that's been helpful. And uh, I will see you again next time.